In June 2022, Keith announced that he had been diagnosed with stomach cancer at the end of the prior year, having undergone chemotherapy, radiation, and surgery for the past six months. Keith said that his battle with cancer had been pretty debilitating in a December 2022 press release. Keith died in his sleep in Oklahoma on February 5, 2024, at the age of 62. Fellow country artists and bands who paid tribute included Dolly Parton, Carrie Underwood, Jason Aldean, Old Dominion, Jelly. Roll, Zach Bryan, John Rich, Lady A, Jake Owen, and others such as First Lady Jill Biden, actor Stephen Baldwin, and radio and television personality Bobby Bones. Toby Keith Koval, July 8, 1961 to February 5, 2024, known professionally as Toby Keith, was an American country music singer, songwriter, record producer, and actor. In the 1990s, he released his first four studio albums Toby Keith, 1993, Boomtown, 1994, Blue Moon, 1996, and Dream Walkin', 1997, and Greatest Hits Volume 1 under Mercury Records. These albums all earned gold or higher certification and had several top 10 singles, including his chart-topping debut Should Have Been a Cowboy. Signed to DreamWorks Records Nashville in 1998, Keith released his breakthrough single How Do You Like Me Now in late 1999. This song, the title track to his 1999 album of the same name, was the number one country song of 2000 and one of several chart toppers during his tenure on DreamWorks Nashville. His next three albums, Pull My Chain, Unleashed, and Shockin' Y'all, produced three more number ones each, and all of the albums were certified four times platinum. A second Greatest Hits package followed in 2004, and after that, he released Honky Tonk University. When DreamWorks closed in 2005, Keith founded the label Show Dog Nashville, which merged with Universal South Records to become Show Dog Universal Music in December 2009. He had released 10 studio albums through Show Dog slash Show Dog Universal, 2000 SIXS White Trash with Money, 2007's Big Dog Daddy, 2008's That Don't Make Me a Bad Guy, 2009's American Ride, 2010's Bullets and the Gun, 2011's Clancy's Tavern, 2012's Hope on the Rocks, 2013's Drinks After Work, 2015's 35 Miles Per Hour Town, 2017's The Bus Songs, and 2021's Peso in My Pocket, as well as the compilation 35 Biggest Hits in 2008. Keith also made his acting debut in 2006, starring in the film Broken Bridges, and co-starred with comedian Rodney Carrington in the 2008 film Beer for My Horses, inspired by his song of the same name. Keith released 19 studio albums, two Christmas albums, and five compilation albums, totaling worldwide sales of over 40 million albums. He charted 61 singles on the Billboard Hot Country Songs charts, including 20 number one hits and 22 additional top 10 hits. His longest-lasting number one hits are Beer for My Horses, a 2003 duet with Willie Nelson, and As Good As I Once Was, 2005, at six weeks each. Keith was awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Donald Trump in a closed ceremony alongside Ricky Skaggs on January 13, 2021. Early life and education Toby Keith Koval was born on July 8, 1961, in Clinton, Oklahoma, to Carolyn Joan, Nay Ross, and Hubert K. Koval Jr. He had a sister and a brother. The family lived in Fort Smith, Arkansas, for a few years when Keith was in grade school, but moved to more of Oklahoma, a suburb of Oklahoma City, when he was still young. Before the family moved to Moore, he visited his grandmother in Fort Smith during the summers. His grandmother owned Billy Garner's Supper Club in Fort Smith, where Keith became interested in the musicians who came there to play. For, he did odd jobs around the supper club and started getting up on the bandstand to play with the band. He got his first guitar at the age of eight. After the family moved to Moore, Keith attended Highland West Junior High and Moore High School, where he played defensive end on the football team. Keith graduated from Moore High School and worked as a derrick hand in the oil fields. He worked his way up to become a supervisor. When Keith was 20, he and his friends formed the Easy Money Band, which played at local bars and roadhouses, as he continued to work in the oil industry. At times, he would have to leave in the middle of a concert if he was paged to work in the oil field. 
In 1982, the oil industry in Oklahoma began a rapid decline and Keith soon found himself unemployed. He fell back on his football training and played defensive end with the semi-pro Oklahoma City Drillers while continuing to perform with his band. The Drillers were an unofficial farm club of the United States Football League's Oklahoma Outlaws. Keith tried out for the Outlaws but did not make the team. He then returned to focus once again on music. His family and friends were doubtful he would succeed, but, in 1984, Easy Money, various other band members included Mike Barnes, T.A. Brower, and David Sailors, began playing the honky-tonk circuit in Oklahoma and Texas. Musical career Keith went to Nashville, Tennessee, where he buskied along Music Row to no avail, until producer Harold Shedd signed him with Mercury Records after receiving a copy of Keith's demo tape from a fan of his, a flight attendant. 1993-1995, Toby Keith and Boomtown Keith's debut single, Should Have Been a Cowboy, went to number one. On the U.S. Billboard Hot Country Songs chart in 1993, and it reached number 93 on the Billboard Hot 100, this song led off his self-titled debut album. Certified Platinum by the Recording Industry Association of America, RIA, for shipments of one million copies, the album produced three more top five hits on the country charts with He Ain't Worth Missing, at number five, comma, a little less talk and a lot more action, originally the B-side of Should've Been a Cowboy, and Wish I Didn't Know Now, both at number two, dot. Stephen Thomas Erlewine of All Music wrote of the album, it is given a production that's a bit too big, clean, glossy, and cavernous for. Keith's good it fits the outsized sound of early 90s radio, but not his outsized talent but beneath that sheen the songs are very strong. He also thought that it showed the signs of the style that Keith would develop on subsequent albums. The album's success led to Keith touring with then label mates Shania Twain and John Brannon. Keith and Twain also appeared in Tracy Lawrence's music video for My Second Home in 1993. Keith then signed with Polydor Records Nashville and released his second album, Boomtown, in September 1994. Also certified platinum, this album was led off by the number one single Who's That Man? After it, Upstairs Downtown and You Ain't Much Fun both made the top 10, while Big Old Truck peaked at number 15. By late 1995, he released his first Christmas album, Christmas to Christmas, via Mercury. Composed entirely of original songs, the album produced one chart entry in Santa I'm Right Here, which reached as high as number 50 based on Christmas Airplay, 1996 to 1998, Blue Moon, Dream Walkin and Greatest Hits Volume 1 Keith then signed with the short-lived Nashville division of A&M Records to release his third album Blue Moon in April 1996. That album received a platinum certification and produced three singles. Its first single, Does That Blue Moon Ever Shine On You, which Keith wrote in 1987, peaked at number two. Following it were A Woman's Touch at number six, and Me Too, which became his third number one hit in March 1997. Keith also appeared on the Beach Boys' now out-of-print 1996 album Stars and Stripes Volume 1 performing a cover of their 1963 hit Be True to Your School with the Beach Boys themselves providing the harmonies and backing vocals. Citation needed, following a corporate merger. Keith returned to Mercury in 1997. His fourth studio album, Dream Walkin', was also his first produced by James Stroud, who would also serve as Keith's co-producer until 2005. It produced two consecutive number two hits with We Were In Love and a cover of Sting's 1996 single I'm So Happy I Can't Stop Crying. Sting also sang duet vocals and played bass guitar on it, and the two also performed the song at the 1997 Country Music Association Awards. After this song, the album's title track reached number 5, while Double Wide Paradise peaked at number 40. Keith's last Mercury release was Greatest Hits Volume 1 in October 1998. The album included 12 of his prior singles and two new songs, The Country Rap Getcha Some and If a Man Answers. Both were released as singles, with Getcha Some reaching the top 20, but If a Man Answers became his first single to miss the top 40. According to Keith, these two songs were originally to be put on a studio album, but Mercury executives, dissatisfied with the album that Keith had made, chose to put those two songs on a greatest hits package and asked him to go work on another album. 
After he recorded two more songs which the label also rejected, he asked to terminate his contract with the label. After exiting Mercury, Keith co-wrote Shane Miner's debut single Slave to the Habit with Chuck Cannon and Costas. Toby Keith playing guitar 1999-2002, How Do You Like Me Now? and Pull My Chain in 1999, Keith moved to DreamWorks Records' Nashville division, of which Stroud served as president. His first release for the label was When Love Fades, which also failed to make top 40. Upon seeing the single's poor performance, Keith requested that it be withdrawn and replaced with How Do You Like Me Now, a song that he wrote with Chuck Cannon, and which had previously been turned down by Mercury. It also served as the title track to his first DreamWorks album. How Do You Like Me Now? The song spent five weeks at number one on the country charts and became his first top 40 pop hit, with a number 31 peak on the Hot 100. 9. It was also the top country song of 2000 according to the Billboard Year End chart. The album, which was certified platinum, produced a top five hit in Country Comes to Town and another number one in You Shouldn't Kiss Me Like This. It was also his first album to feature songs co-written by Scotty Emmerich, who would be a frequent collaborator of Keith's for the next several albums. Steve Huey wrote that this album had a rough, brash attitude that helped give Keith a stronger identity as a performer. 2. In 2001, Keith won the Academy of Country Music's Top Male Vocalist and Album of the Year Awards. Following this album was Pull My Chain, released in August 2001. The album's three singles Dash I'm Just Talking About Tonight, I Wanna Talk About Me, and My List all went to number one on the country charts, with the latter two both holding that position for five weeks. I Wanna Talk About Me, written by Bobby Braddock, also displayed a country rap influence with its spoken word lyrics. The Country Music Association named My List as Single of the Year in 2002, of Pull My Chain. Earl Wine wrote that this is a bigger, better record than its predecessor, possessing a richer musicality and a more confident sense of humor. 2002-2004, Unleashed and Shocking Y'all in 2002, he released the Unleashed album which included four singles. First was Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, The Angry American, which Keith wrote in 20 minutes as a response to the September 11, 2001 attacks. The song references Keith's father, a United States Army veteran who died that March in a car accident. 20. Both this song and Who's Your Daddy were number one hits, with Rocky Baby reaching number 13. The last single was Beer for My Horses, a duet with Willie Nelson which spent six weeks at the top of the country charts. At the time, it was also Keith's highest entry on the Hot 100, at number 22, in July 2003, Keith made a guest appearance on Scotty Emmerich's debut single I Can't Take You Anywhere, which was previously recorded by Keith on Pull My Chain. Emmerich's version of the song was his only top 40 country hit, at number 27. Shockin' Y'all, his eighth studio album, was released in November 2003. The album's title is a pun on the military term shock and odd. It became his second album from which all singles went to number one, I Love This Bar, American Soldier, and Whiskey Girl. Also included on the disc were the Taliban song and Weed with Willie, two live songs recorded with Emmerich. The album was followed in late 2004 by Greatest Hits 2, which included three new songs, Stays in Mexico, Go With Her, and a cover of Inez and Charlie Fox's Mockingbird, recorded as a duet with his daughter, Crystal Keith. Stays in Mexico was a number three hit on the country charts, while Mockingbird peaked at number 27. Keith's final DreamWorks album was Honky Tonk University in early 2005. Lead-off single Honky Tonk You peaked at number eight, followed by As Good As I Once Was, which spent six weeks at number one, and Big Blue Note at number five. After the release of the latter, DreamWorks records ceased operations. 2005 to 2024, after DreamWorks on August 31, 2005, Keith founded a new label, Show Dog Nashville. Its first release was his 2006 album White Trash with Money, followed by the soundtrack to Broken Bridges. He also abandoned Stroud as co-producer in favor of Cannon's wife, Laurie White. The album included three singles, Get Drunk and Be Somebody, A Little Too Late, and Crash Here Tonight. Big Dog Daddy followed in 2007, with Keith serving as sole producer. Its singles were High Maintenance Woman, Love Me If You Can, and Get My Drink On.
Love Me If You Can became Keith's first number one hit since As Good As I Once was more than two years prior. A two-disc Christmas album, A Classic Christmas, followed later in 2007. In 2008, Keith completed his biggest and baddest tour. On May 6, 2008, he released 35 Biggest Hits, a two-disc compilation featuring most of his singles to date, as well as the new song She's a Hottie, which peaked at number 13. Keith released She Never Cried in Front of Me, which went to number one in 2008. Its corresponding album, That Don't Make Me a Bad Guy, followed on October 28, 2008. It was followed by God Love Her, also a number one hit, and Lost You Anyway. American Ride, in 2009, produced another number one in its title track. It was followed by the top 10 hit Crying For Me, Wayman's Song, a tribute to basketball player and jazz bassist Wayman Tisdale, a friend of Keith's who died in May 2009, the album's final single was Every Dog Has Its Day. Bullets and the Gun was released on October 5, 2010. This was Keith's first album not to produce a top 10 hit, with Trailerhood reaching number 19, followed by the title track and Somewhere Else both at number 12. Keith produced the album with session guitarist Kenny Greenberg and recording engineer Mills Logan. On October 25, 2011, Clancy's Tavern was released. The album included the single Made in America, written by Keith along with Bobby Pinson and Scott Reeves, which went to number one. Following it was Red Solo Cup, which had previously been made into a music video which became popular. Upon release as a single, Red Solo Cup became Keith's best peaking crossover, reaching number 15 on the Hot 100. The album's final single was Beers Ago at number 6 in 2012. In December 2011, Keith was named Artist of the Decade by the American Country Awards. Keith's 16th album, Hope on the Rocks, was released in late 2012. It produced only two singles, both of which are top 20 hits, I Like Girls That Drink Beer reached at number 17 and the title track peaked at number 18. In mid-2013, he entered the charts with Drinks After Work, the first single from his 17th album, also titled Drinks After Work. The album's second single is Shut Up and Hold On. In October 2014, Keith released Drunk Americans, the lead single from his 18th studio album, 35 Miles Per Hour Town. In April 2015, Keith released 35 Miles Per Hour Town, the album's title track and second single. In 2015, Keith was also inducted into the Songwriters Hall of Fame. In September 2017, Keith released the compilation album, The Bus Songs. The album contains 12 songs, two new, five re-recorded, and five previously released songs. The new songs on the album were Shitty Golfer and Wacky Tobacky. In the U.S. The bus songs topped the Billboard Comedy Albums chart for 11 weeks. It also reached number 6 on the Top Country Albums chart and 38th on the Billboard 200 chart. In 2021, Keith featured on the Brantley Gilbert single The Worst Country Song of All Time with Hardy. On September 28, 2023, after receiving the first Country Icon Award at the People's Choice Country Awards, Keith performed publicly for the first time since his 2022 cancer diagnosis. His performance of Don't Let the Old Man In, which was previously used in Clint Eastwood's 2018 film The Mule, received a standing ovation. Acting career television appearances Keith performed on a series of television advertisements for Telecom USA for that company's discount long-distance telephone service 10-10-220. He also starred in Ford commercials, singing original songs such as Ford Truck Man and Look Again while driving Ford trucks. Keith made an appearance at the first Total Nonstop Action Wrestling, then NWATNA, weekly pay-per-view on June 19, 2002, where his playing of Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue was interrupted by Jeff Jarrett. He would later enter the gauntlet for the gold main event, suplexing Jarrett and eliminating him from the match. A short video of the suplex is seen in the clip package when he goes on stage. He appeared the next week, on June 26, and helped Scott Hall defeat Jarrett in singles action. In 2009, Keith participated in the Comedy Central roast of Larry the Cable Guy, which aired on March 14, 2009. 
Keith received the Colbert bump when he appeared on Comedy Central's The Colbert Report. He holds the distinction of being the only musical artist to have received a five-star rating from Stephen Colbert on iTunes. Keith furthered this connection when he appeared in Colbert's 2008 Christmas special as a hunter. Keith also made an appearance as a musical guest on the October 27, 2011, episode of The Colbert Report. On October 29, 2011, Keith appeared on Fox Channel's Huckabee with former Arkansas Governor Mike Huckabee. He played Bullets in the Gun and he joined with Huckabee's house band to play a song at the end of the show. In December 2018, Keith appeared as a guest on Darcy Lynn, My Hometown Christmas. Acting in the autumn of 2005, he filmed Broken Bridges, written by Sherry Bennett and Jeff Gottsfeld, and directed by Stephen Goldman. This feature film from Paramount slash CMT Films was released on September 8, 2006. In this contemporary story set in small town Tennessee, Keith plays Bo Price, a washed up country musician. The movie also stars Kelly Preston, Burt Reynolds, Tess Harper, and Lindsay Howne. Keith wrote and starred in the 2008 movie Beer for My Horses, which is based on the 2003 hit song of the same name recorded by Keith and Willie Nelson. Business Ventures in 2005, Keith opened Toby Keith's I Love This Bar and Grill in Oklahoma City, Oklahoma, as well as Syracuse, New York, and Tulsa, Oklahoma, and later also had restaurants in Thackerville, Oklahoma, Auburn Hills, Michigan. Kansas City, Las Vegas, Mesa, Arizona, Peoria, Arizona, St. Louis Park, Minnesota, Foxborough, Massachusetts, Cincinnati, Ohio, Newport News, Virginia, and Denver, Colorado. Keith does not actually own the new restaurants. The new restaurant is the first in a franchise under Scottsdale, Arizona-based Capri Restaurant Group Enterprises LLC, which purchased the master license agreement to build more Toby Keith restaurants nationwide. Capri Restaurant Group is owned by Frank Capri, who opened the restaurant in Mesa in the shopping center known as Mesa Riverview and is planning on opening multiple locations across the country. In 2009, Capri Restaurant Group announced that it will open another I Love This Bar and Grill location in Pittsburgh, Pennsylvania's Southside Works Shopping and Entertainment District. In 2009, Keith also established a line of clothing, TK Steelman. February 2010 marked the opening of the Toby. Keith's I Love This Bar and Grill in the Windstar World Casino, Exit 1, on Interstate 35, in Oklahoma. Other locations opened in 2010 by the Capri Restaurant Group included those in Great Lakes Crossing in Auburn Hills, Michigan, and in the shops at West End in St. Louis Park, Minnesota, both of which closed in 2015 and 2011, Keith introduced a new drink named Wild Shot. At first it was only available in Mexico, but now is sold and served in America. It is a featured drink in his restaurant chain. Keith's music career and his various other business ventures made him one of the wealthiest celebrities in the United States. The July 15, 2013, edition of Forbes magazine features Keith on the cover with the caption Country Music's $500 million Man. The article titled Cowboy Capitalist by Zach O'Malley Greenberg also contains information regarding Keith's earnings as a musician over the course of his career, such as earning $65 million in the past 12 months, which surpasses the earnings of even more well known musicians such as Jay Z and Beyonce, and that he hasn't earned less than $48 million a year over the past five years. Keith wrote at least one number one country single per year over the past 20 years and the partnership between his own label, Show Dog Universal, and Big Machine Records, which Keith also helped found in 2005, Political Beliefs Keith performs for soldiers in Afghanistan, on April 27, 2009. Keith had made numerous trips to the Middle East, starting in 2002, to perform for those serving in the U.S. military. My father was a soldier. He taught his kids to respect veterans, said Keith. It's that respect and the thank you that we have a military that's in place and ready to defend our nation, our freedom. In 2004, Keith called himself a conservative Democrat who is sometimes embarrassed for his party. He endorsed the re-election of President George W. Bush in the 2004 presidential election and performed at a Dallas, Texas, rally on the night before the election. 
Keith also endorsed Democrat Dan Boren in his successful run in Oklahoma's 2nd Congressional District and was good friends with former Democratic New Mexico Governor Bill Richardson. In a January 2007 interview with Newsday, Keith was asked whether he supported the Iraq War. He responded with never did and said he favors setting a time limit on the campaign. He also said, I don't apologize for being patriotic. If there is something socially incorrect about being patriotic and supporting your troops, then they can kiss my ass on that, because I'm not going to budge on that at all. And that has nothing to do with politics. Politics is what's killing America. Keith performs for the troops at the O'Callaghan's Cantina at Camp Lemonnier, Djibouti, on May 31, 2006. In April 2008, Keith said that Barack Obama looks like a great speaker and a great leader. And I think you can learn on your feet in there, so I don't hold people responsible for not having a whole bunch of political background in the House and Senate. His remarks continued, I think, John, McCain is a great option too. In August 2008, he called Obama the best Democratic candidate we've had since Bill Clinton. In October 2008, Keith told CMT that he had left the Democratic Party and he re-registered as an independent. My party that I've been affiliated with all these years doesn't stand for anything that I stand for anymore, he said. They've lost any sensibility that they had, and they've allowed all the kooks in. So, I'm going independent. He also told CMT that he would likely vote for the Republican ticket, partially because of his admiration for Sarah Palin. In March 2009, Keith received the Johnny Mike Spann Memorial Semper Fidelis Award during a New York ceremony held by the Marine Corps Law Enforcement Foundation. The trophy is named for the CIA operative and former Marine Corps captain, who was the first U.S. casualty in the war in Afghanistan. Spending time with our soldiers around the world is something I've always regarded as a privilege and honor, he said. I'm certainly happy to accept this award, but I won't forget for a second who's really doing the heavy lifting to keep this country safe. And that's why I'll keep going back and spending time with those good folks every chance I get. In April 2009, he voiced support for Obama on Afghanistan and other decisions. He hired one of my best friends who I think should run for president someday, General James Jones, as a national security advisor. He's sending troops into Afghanistan. Help is on the way there. And I'm seeing some really good middle-range stuff. I'm giving our commander-in-chief a chance before I start grabbing. So far, I'm cool with it. Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue on March 24, 2001, Keith's father, H.K. Koval, was killed in a car accident. That event and the September 11 attacks in 2001 prompted Keith to write the song Courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue, a song about his father's patriotism and faith in the United States, originally intended only for live shows. According to Keith, following a performance for military leadership, Commandant of the Marine Corps James L., Jones told Keith it was his duty as an American citizen to record the song, as the lead single from the album Unleashed, 2002, courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue peaked at number one on the July 20, 2002, Billboard Hot Country Songs chart. Keith visits with fans during brief breaks in filming the music video American Soldier in Hangar 1600 at Edwards Air Force Base on November 17, 2003. ABC invited Keith to perform on a 2002 Fourth of July concert it was producing. According to Keith, he was dropped from the show after host Peter Jennings heard the song courtesy of the Red, White and Blue and rejected it. Keith was further quoted as saying isn't he Canadian, and I bet Dan Rather wouldn't kick me off his show. Dan Rather, in response, stated and I'm not gonna be a hypocrite, you wouldn't want me to. I like Peter. He's a good guy. ABC, however, stated that it was the network that did not want to begin the show with an angry song. Jennings later stated that, while the situation was regrettable, opening the show with the song probably wouldn't set the right tone. Feud with the Dixie Chicks Keith had a public feud with the Dixie Chicks over the song courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue in 2002, as well as over comments they made about President George W. Bush on stage during a concert in London in March 2003. 
The lead singer of the Dixie Chicks, Natalie Maines, publicly stated that Keith's song was ignorant and it makes country music sound ignorant. Duh. Keith responded by displaying a backdrop at his concert showing a doctored photo of Maines with Iraqi dictator Saddam Hussein. On May 21, 2003, Maines wore a t-shirt with the letters F-U-T-K on the front at the Academy of Country Music Awards, while a spokesperson for the Dixie Chicks said that the acronym stood for Friends United in Truth and Kindness, many, including host Vince Gill, took it to be a shot at Keith, fuck you Toby Keith. In an October 2004 appearance on Real Time with Bill Maher, Maines finally confessed that it was indeed a shot at Keith and that she thought that nobody would get it. In August 2003, Keith's representation publicly declared he was done feuding with Maines because he's realized there are far more important things to concentrate on. Keith was referring specifically to the terminal illness of a former bandmate's daughter, Allison Faith Webb, However, he continued to refuse to say Maines's name and claimed that the doctored photo was intended to express his opinion that Maines's criticism was an attempt to squelch Keith's free speech. In April 2008, a commercial spot to promote Al Gore's We campaign, involving both Keith and the Dixie Chicks, was proposed. However, the idea was eventually abandoned due to scheduling conflicts. Donald Trump on January 19, 2017, Toby Keith performed at the pre-inaugural Make America Great Again. Welcome celebration held at the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C., in celebration of the beginning of the presidency of Donald Trump. Keith thanked outgoing President Barack Obama for his service and thanked President-elect Trump at the start of the celebration. Keith then played several of his patriotic songs, including American Soldier, Made in America, Beer for My Horses, and Courtesy of the Red, White and Blue. On January 13, 2021, it was reported that Keith had been awarded the National Medal of Arts by President Trump. The award was given in a closed ceremony, alongside fellow country musician Ricky Skaggs. Personal life Keith had an honorary degree from Villanova University, which he attended from 1979 to 1980. He planned to be a petroleum engineer. He was an avid University of Oklahoma sports fan, and Keith was often seen at Oklahoma Sooners games and practices. He was also a fan of professional wrestling, being seen in the front row of numerous WWE shows that took place in Oklahoma, as well as performing courtesy of the Red, White, and Blue Live at the first-ever TNA wrestling show on June 19, 2002. He was also a fan of the Pittsburgh Steelers football team. He was a free will Baptist. Keith married Tricia Lucas on March 24, 1984. He was the father of three children. Keith's father, H. K. Koval, was killed after a charter bus collided with his car on Interstate 35 on March 24, 2001. The Koval family was awarded $2.8 million for his wrongful death on December 25, 2007. Elias and Pedro Rodriguez, operators of Rodriguez Transportes of Tulsa, and the Republic Western Insurance Company were found liable, as they failed to equip the bus with properly working air brakes. Philanthropy Keith supported Allies House, a nonprofit organization in Oklahoma designed to aid children with cancer. Of the charity, Keith said, This is a special charity to me. I saw firsthand how a child's cancer diagnosis can devastate a family. Please join me in supporting these kids through Allies House. We're gonna make it better for the kids. Keith filmed a PSA for Little Kids Rock, a national nonprofit that works to restore and revitalize music education in disadvantaged U.S. public schools. As of 2015, Forbes estimated Keith's annual income at $53 million.